How are we doing, everyone? The Ralph Ragnick era has begun. He's given his first press conference as Manchester United manager. Here he is, standing on the pitch at Old Trafford, holding that shirt. It's time to get excited, and it's time to start properly talking about what could his team set up like. We're going to run through, in this video, we're going to run through what Ralph has actually said in his first interview as Manchester United manager that might give us a bit of a clue or an inkling towards what could happen in the game against Crystal Palace on Sunday. And I'm going to give my predicted 11 for the team I think that Ragnick will put out. So before I do start, please, if you can, if you enjoy it by the end of it, consider dropping a like on it and subscribing to United People's TV. But let's dive straight into this one. And let's dive straight in to some quotes from Ragnick. Because as I said, this is going to give us a little bit of insight into what his team is actually going to set up like. So what is Ragnick going to focus on straight away? Because obviously his philosophy is quite complicated. I think it's fair to say, quite intense. It's not something you can learn overnight. So what is he going to be focusing on straight away? This is what Ragnick had to say. He said, I mean, in football, it's all about control. If you want to win games, you have to have control, no matter if the other team has got the ball or you are in possession of the ball yourself. This is probably one of the major targets in the next couple of weeks to help the team to have control on the game and at least against the top teams in the last couple of weeks. Control is something that Ragnit really spoke about quite a lot in his interview. Control, 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 both in and out of possession. How is that going to affect the team? We'll discuss that in a second. And this is what Elsie said. He said, I saw the games against Liverpool and City at Chelsea, even though we won a point there. And even against teams like Watford, the team didn't have control. They didn't have control over the game. And this is something that we will try to achieve. Of course, this has to do with what we do when we have the ball ourselves and what we are going to do when the other team has the ball. In those two areas, I think it's important to develop the team over the next couple of weeks. And on the other hand, we won't have that much training time. And in this part of the interview, he sort of explains, says, look, man, <laughs> there's a game every three days. It's going to be very hard for us to sort of implement our tactics, implement everything we're doing. So I think United, I know United are back in training today. There's going to be a recovery session after the game against Arsenal. And the players that trained, so the played in that game won't be training in full. So I imagine it's going to be like a theory day. I don't know. They go, they, they watch presentations uh, from Ragnick on, on what he wants to bring to Manchester United. But let's take a look at what the team could and should be against Crystal Palace on Sunday. Because this is who he started against Arsenal. He saw Tellers at the back with Lindelof, Maguire and Delot. He saw McTominay and Fred in midfield. Bruno there in the number 10. It was the classic 4-2-3-1 formation, really that we have seen from Manchester United so often under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. It was his go-to formation. Now, my immediate instinct of what I think, if because look, right, if we're looking at control, if control is the buzzword from Ralph Ragnick, where's that control going to come from inside this team and inside that starting eleven? I think if you're looking at that back four, this is probably the most important defender, is Victor Lindelof. He's definitely the most confident with the ball at his feet. And I think Maguire is under threat, if I'm being completely honest, once this man is back. I would imagine that Varane and Lindelof is a duo that Ralph Ranick will want to see fit and able and ready at Manchester United because it strikes me as the centre-back partnership that will offer the most ability to have control. And that's going to be my buzzword with every decision I'm looking at. In terms of the back five for the game against Crystal Palace, I don't think that will actually change. I think if we're looking at performances, I thought Diogo Delot and Alex Tellez, to different degrees, both have very good games against Arsenal. Delot in particular, he was not only doing his job well there, but he was really aggressively going forward. And let me just get that up there. There you go. And his overlaps, his cross, his reverse pass to Marcus Rashford for the second goal. Delot played well. Delot will definitely be in this team, in my opinion, anyway. And uh, we don't know how uh, bad wan hand injury. That was the reason he was out of the team. But as far as the back five is concerned, I'd actually expect it to be the same as it once was against Arsenal. What I need to see more is Manchester United. I don't know if you noticed this. I definitely did. Whenever Aaron Ramsdale had the ball, I don't. Know, and United don't seem to do it as tightly. You had Gabriel and White, who were standing right on the edge of the six-yard box there. I think United typically... We have Lindelof and we're a bit more split. So whenever we pass the ball out from the back here and it's over there and say anybody tries to press that area, Maguire doesn't really know what to do and everybody's so far apart 
but United can't really have any sort of element of control. And we're so bad at playing out from the back with the ball. We have to change that. So for me, I think it's going to be that back five. And Ragnick is definitely going to be working on changing and improving our ability to play out from the back with the ball. I'm going to move on to the midfield next. But before I do, I just want to say a quick shout out to our sponsors. Before I do move on, I want to say a big shout out to One Football for helping support United People's TV throughout the last few months. If you haven't already downloaded the app, you know where to go right now. Head down to the link in the description, download it. First of all, it's free and everyone loves free things. Uh, second of all, it's actually a decent app, more than decent. All the latest Manchester United news, match coverage, pre-game build-up, all the match stats after the game, all the latest transfer news. It's all in one place. That's why it's called One Football. So use the link in the description, download it for free. It will support United People's TV. It will support One Football and everyone's a winner. But let's move on to talk about the midfield. Big up to One Football, by the way. But let's move on. Let's go straight to this, straight to the team. And let's talk about the midfield because I think this is where we're going to see changes. I predicted that we were going to see the 4 triple two against Arsenal. I was wrong. We stuck to the 4 2 3 one but as we saw towards the end there, certainly with this man up front, he was pressing like a machine against uh, Arsenal. Uh, I think he had like 27 pressures in the 90 minutes. It's like three or four, loads of pressures from Ronaldo. And right up to the end, remember that counter-attack when Fred clipped it over, Sancho ran forward, Rashford, no, Bruno and Ronaldo full pelt in the 87th minute. The guy's fitness levels are top, top draw. So I said, I, as I said, I thought it was going to be a, a four triple two against Arsenal, I was wrong, but I'm definitely going to predict it again today because I don't think tactically it's that much of a move away from that 4-2-3-1. A lot of the characteristics are quite similar. I think McTominay and Fred, I think they'll both start this game. As, 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 every, as everybody has basically said, everybody expects this man to be an absolute monster under Ralph Ragnick. And something that's happened in the last couple of games for sure is Fred's position Typically, I think what we've seen, so say let's take uh, the game against West Ham, for example. I remember that one. It was McTominay who was allowed to sort of drift further forward. Fred was covering in behind him. Last couple of games, it's flipped. It's been Fred who's sort of operating in these roles over here. Fred's been putting himself about and playing very well because of it. I think Fred will do the same thing again there. And if you're looking at like really controlling the game, then maybe you would you would take, not, not that you would take Bruno out, but you would take someone out, maybe Rashford, and you would put Matic there in front of that back four, and you would, do, you would I don't know, switch to maybe a bit of a 4-3-3, but I don't really think that formation will come too often under Ragnik. I think it's going to be that 4 triple two. As I said, I think McTominay, McTominay will be in this team, but if we sign someone like Haidara, he will be out of this team, for sure. And that's my opinion anyway. Not, I think he will be a good squad player, but Fred, for me, is going to make himself absolutely indispensable. Somehow, last night's performance from Fred against Arsenal was prime Fred, peak Fred. Crazy at points and then brilliant at other points. Very frustrating and then incredible. That's what Fred does, but I think he's going to become far more consistent under Ragnik. Now, I think it's going to be Sancho and Bruno there again. I would have big questions about this man, and it depends on on what this control wants to be from Ragnar. Because if you've got someone like Marcus Rashford, he didn't, he didn't look like 100% fit against Arsenal or he didn't look 100% up for it. I don't know what it was with Marcus Rashford, but he looked a bit odd. And I, was, I, I said at halftime that I would probably have made that switch if I was uh, Michael Carrick and I would have put Greenwood on there. And then Rashford got the assist for Ronaldo's goal to make it 2-1. So lo and behold, I don't really know what I'm talking about, uh, which, which I think everyone knows by now. But I think... <laughs> I'm not sure whether Rashford will start this game. I think personally, I think Bruno and Sancho in these positions seem obvious. It just seems obvious. Sancho is somebody who Ragnick tried to sign when he was 17, but he decided not to go to Leipzig and he went to Borussia Dortmund. And as he said, it's, it, was, well, it wasn't exactly the wrong move for his career, was it? Bruno Fernandes, I think he can thrive inside this. It just, it makes sense. And I understand that it's only going to be after one training session, right? So we're not, we're not going to see a swathe of changes. We're not going to see a huge amount of difference. But they're also, that's why I thought this was a subtle change in the formation. A 4 triple 2 largely on the pitch, it's very similar to a 4-2-3-1. One. 
It's just the changes will come. And I did. I expected them against Arsenal. I didn't, I didn't see them. I expected United to be better out of possession. And that's what I need to see here. And that's why the likes of Sancho is still on. Rashford, Bruno. If you're looking at a high press, those players are capable of it. And I know Ronaldo uh, won't do it for the full 90 minutes, but he doesn't have to. But as I've said, I, I, it depends where we press, right? Because we can press in different zones. We could, for example, press high up the pitch. You could see everybody swarming this zone here. Or you could see United maybe do a mid-press, wait until it gets towards the, se the centre circle, and that's when United start pressing. I don't think we're going to press deep like this. We won't press deep. Ultimately, what uh, Ralph uh, Ragnick will want is that high press, is for United to be winning the ball in between the edge of the D and the opposition's D and the start of the centre circle. That's where he'll want to win the ball the most, in these areas, because if you win the ball there, their defence is going to be out of shape, unorganised, and that's when United can punish. But I'm going for a 4 two, a four triple 2 I feel pretty confidently that Ralph Radnick will play that. And as I said, if we go back to the interview that he had and we see what he said, he said, look, it's, in football, it's all about control. If you want to win games, you have to control no matter if the other team has got the ball or if you are in possession yourself. That, for me, is a team which can offer control. If you really want to go for proper control, you're probably going to put Nemanja Matic in as a safety net. But I don't think he's going to suit this Ragnik system. It's really interesting, man. It's a really interesting conversation and debate. And no one will know until we see that starting eleven against Crystal Palace. But what do you think about that team? I'm sticking with the back five that played against Arsenal and McTominay and Fred and Bruno and Sancho and Ronaldo and Rashford. In fact, is that, this, that, is, that is a starting eleven, isn't it? Uh, I've, just, I've just tweaked the positions. What would you do? You let me know in the comments below. I can't wait to see the Ragnik era start. We, we can't expect too much difference between Arsenal and Crystal Palace, considering he's only going to have one full training session with the entire squad. But then we've got Young Boys a few days later, and then we've got Norwich. And after that week, you could expect some, some semblance of it to kick in. But in terms of the initial things that he wants to do, he wants to get control back in and out of possession. That's why I would say this 4 triple 2 which works under Ragnik, get the players used to it, and it's, it's similar enough to the 4 2 3 one that the players won't be like, whoa, that's a completely different system. But it's going to be interesting, man. I have no idea how it's going to pan out. Who would you put in the starting eleven? What formation do you think that Ragnit will use? You let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. Until next time, though, take it easy.